Hey there, color pencil enthusiasts. Welcome back. I'm Jeanette, a color pencil professional, and today I'm going to show you the secret to dealing with the elephant in the room, composition. That thing we all know is there, but we never really talk about. I've got one easy skill to get your artwork to focus on visual interest, and we'll do it using the rule of thirds. You'll be amazed at how easy it is and how it will just springboard that elephant, your composition, to a whole new level. So stay tuned. And as always, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more art inspiration. Let's start by grabbing a 2B graphite pencil. You'll draw four rectangles on a piece of sketch paper, freehand or with a ruler. Doesn't matter. Orientation is landscape. I'll draw mine with a ruler and make them three inches high by four inches wide. These rectangles represent a drawing paper at nine by 12 or about an A4 and the sketches are called thumbnails. So composition helps us tell the story in our artwork. By learning composition, we can arrange elements effectively, guide the viewer's eyes, and create harmony. The rule of thirds is a simple trick to set up a focal point. It divides the drawing area into nine parts and helps us place key elements for a pleasing composition. Learning composition and using the rule of thirds is easy, and it will definitely boost your confidence in your art. If composition is the door to the story, the rule of thirds is the key to focus, and that is staring the elephant right in the face. And I love that. To begin, let's look at four images for inspiration. These images might be something we would typically draw. And although they're good, they could do with a little bit of a boost in the wow factor. I'm going to start with the landscape. I'll begin by sketching it out in my first square using a 2B drafting pencil. Okay, so if you remember, using composition is about telling a story. But to tell the story, we need to know where to begin and how to get there. As mentioned earlier, we're going to use focus or a focal point to help us get there. In visual arts, a focal point is like the star of a painting or picture. It's the main thing that catches your eye and stands out from the rest of the image, helping you know where to look and understand the artist's message better. So then let's look at the photo of the landscape close up. Imagine this is the next drawing subject and then ask yourself these two questions. Number one, what's the main thing that catches my eye and stands out from the rest? And number two, what do I want the main thing to be as the focus? It seems that the focus right now is kind of on the big house, right? But then again, there's so much stuff going on that we can't really tell. There's a really big tree on the right and then there's a smaller house on the left. And you're going to have to make a decision about what you want to focus on when you're looking at your subject. As long as it's something that's intriguing and telling a story. Okay, so if I decide that I want the big house to be the focal point, what am I going to do next? Now that we have that focus subject, we have to reposition the image to make it the focal point. And to do this, we're going to now introduce the rule of thirds into the picture. So the rule of thirds divides the drawing area up into nine equal spaces using two horizontal and two vertical lines. Using points on the grid, we position the subjects on three of those points. This positioning adds balance and interest to the artwork as our eyes tend to naturally gravitate towards these areas. It helps to avoid a centered and static composition, making the artwork more dynamic and engaging to look at. Typically, we want to place a horizon line on the top or lower horizontal grid line. This also helps the picture look balanced and creates a sense of space and depth in the photo, making it more visually appealing. We only see a small amount of the horizon line on this photo, but it is enough for a starting point. So the first thing that we want to do for focus is to create a bit of a balance, and we're going to move the image around and resize it so that the main part of the big house aligns with three points of the rule of thirds grid. So what happens if I move it a little bit to the right and then make the image a little bit larger? So let's look at that. Okay, so I've moved the image around a bit and the house does sit on three points of the rule of thirds. From the first sketch, there's definitely a change in focus. But you'll also notice that the horizon line is still not sitting on the bottom horizontal line. But let's go ahead and start my sketch for the first alternative layout. The idea with these small studies is that they're done quickly. Remember, as I'm showing you how to do this, it's taking a bit more time to do this demo and these little sketches, but you should be able to do a quick thumbnail in a matter of a minute or two. Any more time on them is not what these are for. 
You can also do thumbnails on the computer or just move the image around as an alternative. Anything to get you considering how to create a more interesting layout. Let's talk about thumbnail sketches for a second. Thumbnail sketches serve as a preliminary step in the creative process for visual artists. They really help artists to explore various ideas and compositions before committing to a final piece. Thumbnail sketches allow artists to quickly visualize different possibilities, experiment with different elements, and make decisions about compositions, proportions, and overall design. And that's fantastic! Whenever I'm working on a layout for a drawing that I'm doing in my professional practice, I always ask myself, is the original image or idea a really good composition? Almost 100% of the time, I'll use the rule of thirds grids as a starting point to give me better understanding of what the possibilities are. Remember, it's not always going to be 100% perfect the first time around, and sometimes the rules can be broken. But for those of you starting out with composition and focus, the rule of thirds and using thumbnails are great tools. Okay, so we're flying now. We've got one layout and it's done in under a minute. Yay, that's fantastic. So let's zoom in onto another layout. We have the original back again, and this time I'm going to move the house to the left and have a bit more focus on the plant. So we're gonna see what that looks like. I'll have to zoom in a bit and move this around. Now the image has a new focus and orientation. And the house is kind of off-centered and it's sitting on three of those points. So let's just jump in and start another sketch. Let's just talk about the rule of thirds for a little bit. The rule of thirds has its roots in ancient Greece. That's been around for a while. Where artists discovered that adhering to the guideline created harmony and aesthetic appeal. While there is alternative composition techniques such as the golden ratio that many of you have probably heard about or something called the central composition, the rule of thirds remains widely popular and commonly used in various art forms including painting, photography and graphic design and in our case drawing. So we're on to our last image. Let's go back one more time to look at the original photo. Although I think that the orientation of the image is getting better, it's still not perfect. And for the next and final decision, we're going to take a little bit of a different approach. Sometimes we have to make a decision to get rid of items. And we can fill those areas in we removed either with our imagination or with another image that we can find to fit in there. If I really want the image to be focused on the house, the tree to the right and the small house need to go. The original image is crowded and unless this image is something that's really special, there's no reason to keep them. They don't add to the story. Remember, the focus is on the house. Next, I'll move the main focus back to the right and I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Then I'm going to remove the little building and fill it in with a background of a field. I'm also going to remove the tree that's center on the house and orientate the full image so the horizon line is on the one third lower grid line and the house is nicely placed on the three points of the grid. You'll notice now that the three points create a journey. It forces the eye of the viewer to travel and even the angle of the roof carries our eye from one area of the house to the other. It's very cool with all the elements coming together. So we finalize the design and let's go ahead and do our final sketch. Remember, you can do as many composition sketches as you need. I'm only doing three as the demo. Also, do these sketches quickly. Don't add color if you find that it takes more time and just keep asking yourself, what do I want the focus point to be? Let's take a quick look at those three other images we saw at the beginning to put what we learned into practice. If we look at the still life, for instance, it seems like the focus is the cup, the bottle, and the candle. But there's still a lot of other stuff going on in the picture. It's making it really hard to focus on the main subject. If we remove all the other elements, this starts to look better. Pulling in, keep to the three points, and then remove the wall line in the picture in the back. That makes a big change. What about this dog picture? We know for sure what the subject is, but again, so much outside information. For subjects with eyes, we want to place them on the top or bottom grid line, like horizon lines on landscape. It just visually works better. We don't want to pull in too close because the position of the dog's body would get cut off in a very weird and awkward way. Try not to cut off body parts if you can help it. And then finally, our last image, a group of people. 
Again, it's pretty clear what the subject is, but there's a lot of information going on around them, and it's distracting. Also, how do we deal with eyes since there's four sets of them? We can do a happy medium and find a place between the upper and lower subjects. To focus more on these subjects, what about even changing the overall orientation of this drawing paper to portrait instead of landscape? Pull in close enough without cutting off limbs and slightly lower it and center using symmetry or central composition. Slightly different way of looking at things than what we were doing before. This is a much nicer setup and the focal point is clear and you have another great and simple composition idea. As you move forward, keep in mind that it shouldn't take long to find your focal point and create great compositions using the rule of thirds. It's that elephant in the room and we finally addressed it. Remember, keep trying this out with simple, quick sketches and don't be afraid to experiment. Thanks for joining me today and I can't wait to see you in our next video. Happy drawing.